of you who knows me, eight years ago I founded the Wooden Sabai Conservation Center in, in, in Sabah and this from the Sabai Conservation uh, Center perspective and what should we do to help this little uh, bears that live in this past forest. Um, most of you uh, are blocking, it seems like I'm blocking somebody. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Okay, so this is sun bear, for those of you who do not know, this is the smallest of all the hip living bear species. Uh, they are very special in many, many ways. Uh, you wanna, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to go through all this morphology thing. But anyway, they live in our forest. For Malaysian, I think we all have to know that this bear carried the pride of Malaysia because some of the first specimens of sun bear was described first from Malay Peninsula. Hence, the scientific name, Hila Actus Malayanus, okay, by Postgal from 200 years ago, from here. So these animals carry our Malaysian identity, so we should feel special and feel proud about it. We do have a bear called sun bears, that name after us. Sun bears in the forest play very important roles as seed dispersal. They eat durians, uh, they eat more than 100 species of fruits in the forest that we know of. After eating the fruits, they ingest the seed and then carry uh, the seed far away from the mother tree. This process is called seed dispersal. The seed dispersal process is extremely important in our kind of forest, especially in the tropical rainforest, uh, because life is thriving, life is alive, you know, life is living all year round because of uh, stable climates, uh, warm and hot and humid all year round. Uh, high solar radiation, so everything in our forest is eating something else, okay? So for a tree perspective, the predators and the disease that attack on that particular tree is always hanging around on the mother tree. So the tree will develop like nice eating fruits, attract animals and come and eat the fruits at the same time. Please carry my seed, you know, far away from me so that the survivorship of the seedling is in yeah, so see this is very important. And sun bear, like you know, like what I show over here, durian, wild durians are very, very important. Uh, they play very important roles on dispersing wild durian fruits. And then uh, beside eating fruits, sun bear has been known to feed on more than 100 species of fruits. Beside eating fruits, when fruits is available, they will eat on fruits. When fruit is not available, they will feed on a wide variety of invertebrates, including termites, ants, you know, whatever that you can see in the forest that is moving, that is sun bear food. It's very, very simple. You know, anything that is crawling is sun bear food, period. Including porpoises as well in the forest. And then uh, one of the food items that they eat actually is, is actually termite. Some termite species, not all, some termite species, for example the macrocero termis, are known to attack live tree. When sun bear found this kind of macrocero termis nest, they will eat it, but they don't eat them all. The key point is that they would control the populations in an equilibrium condition, a balance, you know, and preventing an outbreak of the macroceratomus inside the forest and, and, and kill many trees at a particular point. And then uh, when they feed on termite, well, yeah, when they feed on uh, 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 earthworms and other uh, soil invertebrates, yeah, they actually enhance the soil nutrient cycle so through the digging and digging. And then some other animals like bitter pigs, like uh, wooden ground cuckoo, like some of the uh, pheasants, they're actually following uh, bears because after a bear feeding site, there's a lots of food items remain and that is the stuff that they eat as well. So some they actually do help other species uh, uh, to look for food as well, so very important. And then another very important food items of the sun bears is that they love honey. Some Malay name for uh, sun bears is Burdwang Manu. They love honey. Not just we need the food, love honey. Our sun bears love honey as well. You know, when they, they love honey to a point where regardless of where is the beehive, they will get up there. Including a big tree, like 20 meters above the ground, on a tropical hardwood, this is the height where the stingless bee build their nest. And some bear will get in, dig in, get the honey out, yummy, and then 
the story does not end here. The story actually continues. Hongbyo, after that, would use these cavities that break apart by the uh, sun bears yeah, as nests. So sun bears do build nests for other species. So they are very important uh, force engineer, we call it, that build uh, many, many nests, uh, that build many, many uh, nesting sites for many species. Uh, this map is the sun bear distribution uh, map. They are found across South Asia, ranging from eastern tip of India, Bangladesh, southern tip of China, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Peninsula, Malaysia, Sumatra, and Borneo. And the gray area shown in this map is the extant area. Sun bear has been wiped out from this area because of habitat destructions, because of hunting and poaching. And the pink area is the one that we, they may be found there because the habitat is still there, the forest is still there, but there's no study. And the red area is the one that we know for sure sun bears are there. So from this map, you see that you know there's lots of area in this Indochina regions, small dots of red patches. Those red patches are extremely vulnerable for uh, vulnerable to hunters, hunting and poaching can easily wipe out this area. This map was produced in 2006. I'm sure right now we are reworking on this map. Many of the red spots that you found here already gone, already become gray area. And then another thing is that this uh, forest, uh, there are two different species of sun bears, uh, subspecies of sun bear. The Malayan sun bear, Hilakus malayanus malayanus, the one that found in the Asian mainland and Sumatra, and Hilakus malayanus spillus is the one that found in Borneo, which is half the size of the mainland sun bear. Uh, Borneo, uh, okay, so we'll talk about the threats. Uh, used to be, it used to be the biggest threat for the sun bear is habitat destructions. Over the last 50 years, the forest, the tropical forest across South Asia has been heavily locked for the tropical, part of the tropical timber. And then all of these timber uh, extractions are originally from the sun bear habitat. Sun bear is also known as forest dependent species. They live in the forest. If there's no forest, there's no habitat, you know. And then uh, this map shows the forest cover of, well, that is not forest cover, land use of, uh, of, of uh, West Malaysia. And then uh, the green area is the forest cover. And the purple area are the oil palm plantations. So you can see the size of the oil palm plantations relatively to the existing forest. And then uh, and there's another thing is that most of the forests are, are restricted on central uh, spine, this is very montane, hilly, rugged area where uh, logging is uh, virtually impossible and then all the lowland forests already gone and reconverted into palm plantation. Uh, Borneo, the same thing as well. The forest of Borneo has been declined more, about 30% from 1973 up to 2010. This map shows between 1973 to 2010. All of the red area has been deforested. Logging happenings and then uh, all become you know something else. Uh, this map shows the logging road, the slightly low, you know, yellowish color are all zig logging road zigzagging through the landscape of Borneo. And then uh, only the dark green area uh, in the central area, or some little small spot like this spot is done very uh, uh, conservation area, this is Malayal Basin, this is Kinabalu Park, remains as primary forest. The rest are all being selectively logged. Uh, of course, we know what happened after the logging. Yeah? And then uh, many forests have been converted into palm plantations after the logging, after the log has been uh, extracted and then uh, the land has been converted into palm plantations. And this is one of the threats of the sun bear. Uh, and then uh, in Malaysia and, and, and Indonesia, uh, uh, oil plantation uh, industry is a big, big business. You know, it, the industry generates a lots of revenues towards the economy, and then uh, people are still uh, doing it now today. And then uh, sun bears are also found in, like, say, this is a newly opened uh, forest converted to palm plantations, and this is the selective block forest, and bears are found there. So what happened to a lots of this landscape is that. Because palm plantations produce oil palm seed. Oil palm seed is good food for many wildlife, human as well, including sun bears as well. So for those animals that live here, it's just a matter of time that they will learn to eat and exploit 
oil palm seed and they come out from the forest. When they come out from the forest to the palm plantation, they lost the cover. And then what also happening is that these types of landscape also attract poachers or hunters that come to hunt for bearded pigs, hunt for babikotan. And then if they come across sunbear, they would not hesitate to kill and shoot it. So this kind of habitat is becoming a sink population, sink habitat where animals are being attracted out from the forest, they lost the cover from the forest and then boom, they got shot and they got killed. You know? And this is what happens to sun bears across Southeast Asia over the last many, many years. I'm, I apologize for the graphic, especially for kids, not so nice to look at. Uh, but this is the reality. Sun bears are being hunted, are being killed. Some of the photos are being shown on Facebook. Imagine that. So these were the case that happened few years, uh, a few months ago uh, in Sarawak. And then, uh, yeah, people showed up, think that it is very, very good. And also, these pictures are also from, uh, from Facebook. And then, uh, some of the uh, last year, on October, in, in KK, two men in the hotel because of selling eight Sunday balls. Two weeks after that, another people got nabbed, uh, selling the whole harvest of sunbears. This is very bad things that happen over here. This is Kapit last year. Things are still happening in this part of the world where a carcass of sunbear is openly displayed for sale. Uh, that bad thing. Although sunbears are protected species, but obviously there's something that is still not get you know quite right happening. Although we do have the, the, the law to protect sunbears. Three years ago, Traffic Science Asia, Traffic Value, uh, have done this study. Study the uh, traditional Chinese medicine shop across Malaysia. They surveyed 365 uh, traditional Chinese medicine shops, and out of these 365 shops, 48% of the shops sell bear parts. Bear parts in bear gallbladder, uh, bear gallbladder in capsule, and all of that stuff. So it is illegal, but yet it is happening. So I'm trying to show you how and what is the current situation. And then lately, some things that we never experienced happened. Bears got hit by car. So this is another cause of mortality because of human developments. You know, this is in Durango, uh, Durango, uh, uh, happened uh, last year. And then uh, we never heard this kind of thing before, but it is happening and I'm sure that in the future, if things do not improve, this kind of situations will get more and more common. Isn't it cute? Yes, very cute. Because of their cuteness, they are in trouble. Sun bear cubs are being kept as pets. Yeah, when they are small, they are very cute. Just like what uh, Bum is trying to tell about the story of the even same thing happened with the sun bear. Across South Asia, sun bears are being kept as pets because this is the smallest bear in the world, and because of hunting and poaching, they are babies available in the market and people want to keep them but they do not know what are they getting to. Several months later, after a year or so, these animals will turn into a beast that destroy everything in the forest. So these are not pets. These are not pets. So again, you know, people sell Sunday cups in, in, this, in, in, um, in Facebook and, and, and all the social media. So social media in some way has become a very popular way for wildlife trade. Uh, this is Mary, another case study of the bears that we rescued. Uh, so this kind of story happening over and over again. And then uh, in 2004, I did a survey of sun bears in captivity and found out that across Malaysia, there are quite an alarming rates of, uh, of sun bears being kept as pets, and it worries me. And sun bears are being displayed in mini zoos, in crocodile farm, you know, and all this kind of uh, private area. And then, uh, because sun bears is a protected species, sometimes the government agency do rescue them and keep them in their facilities, but the facilities is equally, you know, not so good, yeah. And then, uh, so these animals are very, very pathetic. Some of them are being decoyed because the fears of harming to the owner. So bears are being cut off their claws. You know, bears that are being cut off their claws is like humans without finger. You know, they use their claws so much on their daily activity, but yet, sun bears without claws is like really, really bad. Yeah, really, really bad. So, a lot of sad uh, uh, bears around. 
So what should we do to help save some bed? You know, I think the first thing that we have to do is to secure their, their habitat. Our rainforest is very, very special in many, many ways. Yeah? Right now we have to, we have to, we have to protect every single tree in our forest. Every single tree counts now because of the habitat destruction, deforestation is so rampant now. Our standing forest is so valuable now today. It is not just for wildlife habitat, but for our survival. Because clean air, clean water, and stable climate come from our forest. You know, and one of the good example I think Sabah Gardens uh, pledge for the protections of 50% of the total land area in the states remains as forest, and among them, 30%. It's going to be a totally protected area, uh, totally protected forest where timber harvesting is not allowed in this in this forest. So that is good, good pledge, and I hope that other parts of Southeast Asia do the same thing as well. And then uh, we have to uh, do a ensuring our sustainable consumption of natural resources, especially timber uh, product. In our future, in the future, I don't think. We are allowed. We can use animal timber come from natural forests. We have to depend on, say, for example, the, uh, the, the timber plantation, acacia or eucalyptus, softwood, but hopefully we can use our human technology and, and wood processing technology to enhance the strength and the quality of the wood so that we can use it in our daily life. You know, we cannot cut our forest animal because it is so valuable. And then, this, and then uh, about the palm oil plantations, uh, palm oil issues, that we have to make sure that, you know, use the sustainable palm oil and support the sustainable palm oil initiative. Uh, Saba, again, the government pledged by 2025, all of the oil palm, uh, palm oil produced in the states is going to be certified. So that is a very good pledge of the government. And one big thing about this uh, sustainable palm oil is that as long as uh, uh, one of the criteria for the sustainable palm oil is that this palm oil cannot be produced from a newly locked or newly clear forest, you know. So at least we can slow down or stop uh, deforestation or forest conversions uh, as much as possible. And again, the problem lies on us, human population. Right now, we have reached 7.5 billion. There are a lot of us in the planet Earth, no matter we like it or not. So we have to, you know, use less resources. We try, okay? And then uh, we have to use recycling, but if we can use less, please use less. And then thirdly is value food items. Yeah. And then right now we are facing a food crisis now. If all, all of the mother, if you go to do your shopping, you will notice that the prices of garlic has increased tremendously four over the last five years or so. So that's one of the signs. And then uh, we have to, we have to consider, you know, alternative for generating uh, revenues. Timber extractions, extractions of natural resources have to come to an end. And we have to come up with an alternative. And one of the alternatives that we have, and I say for example, what Saba has been promoting right now is promoting this ecotourism. Ecotourism equally equally bring in lots of money. Say how much is a month? Uh, Malaysia government estimated that 25.7 million tourists in 2015 and that translates into like almost 70 billion uh, tourism money. So that is a good and lucrative industry. If we manage our forest nicely and that is, this ecotourism definitely is the way to go. So definitely the sustainable uh, way to go. And we have to stop poaching. You know, the, our poaching is horrible and it's horrible. And we have to stop the poaching, stop the buying, and stop the killing. Every single person in our country has the responsibility to report for any wrongdoing at this stage now. Sun bears is so vulnerable. They have such a slow reproduction rate. A female in her lifetime, if they can produce up to three or four sun bears, that is considered as productive. They cannot withstand any kind of uh, any kind of uh, killing. So so yeah. So we have to stop them. We have to make sure that you know the law is enforced properly. We do have good wildlife law, but the law enforcement is still weak. Yeah, and then the willingness of prosecutions is still weak. And then uh, we have to punish all the offenders. 
as hard as possible. Because this relatively small group of people can equally produce a devastating effect to our human population, uh, to our wildlife population, especially the sun bears and all, the, all of the endangered uh, species. And again, you know, these types of habitats is actually quite vulnerable. You know? And then uh, with the remaining forest fragmented by human activity, right now what happened was that the natural forest, the sun bear habitat, the wildlife habitat is getting smaller and smaller. But yet, but yet human population is getting more and more. The demand for wildlife product is getting more and more. So that is scary. Imagine that the population, the wildlife population is slower, human population is increasing, our buying power increasing, our consumption you know, uh, power increasing. Those are the devastating, will bring devastating effect to the remaining, the remaining wildlife population. Yeah, and I think, uh, again, uh, established proper facilities to house all of these confiscated sun bears are important. And therefore, it, uh, nine years ago, I founded the Bulin Sun Bear Conservation Center. Under the theme of conservation, we try to conserve sun bear through a holistic approach that incorporates improved animal welfare, education, research, and rehabilitation. And this project is very fortunate to have the collaboration from Sabah Wildlife Department, Sabah Forestry Department, and, and an NGO called LEAP to initiate uh, funding and, uh, and yeah, so we have a board of uh, directors, board of members to run this, and then we are a non-profit organization. We are located at Sertilor, at, uh, uh, at Sandakan in Sabah, and then uh, we have two hectares of forest enclosures. These are two hectares of forest enclosures divided into ten different uh, forest, uh, forest pens, uh, two bear houses, and then a visitor center, and so on and so forth. We do a lot of fundraising. You know, our work pretty much reflect on the amount of funding that we can raise. Uh, over the last nine years or so, we keep on doing fundraising and then build these kind of facilities. And then uh, finally, after six years of building, fundraising, and then uh, we uh, open to the public uh, for the very first time. These are some of the pictures. So for those of you who haven't been to our center, I strongly encourage you, come and visit us, come and see the bears. Uh, these are facilities. And after that, uh, we, you know, we, people can enjoy and see bears. Uh, in a, Forest enclosure. This is the bears over here, and these are people. Uh, we are very lucky to have this piece of natural forest enclosure with big trees. And later, I'll show you some videos of you know how the bears live in our forest. And literally, background over here are our uh, uh, sun bear enclosure. The bears grow up in this natural forest. Our visitor centers, uh, bear house, and things like that. Major funders, a lot of funding, a lot of uh, funding. And finally, in 2014, we opened uh, to the public, and then uh, with that, we welcome public, we educate them, and we do a lot of uh, works with them. People come and see the bears, learn about the bears. Our visitors number from 2014 was 50,000. Last year, increased to 63,000 people. So that is good in many, many ways. Right now, our staff have 28 staff now. Uh, five years ago, we only have like four full-time staff with, you know, very various uh, units that work on educa environment education, uh, research and rehabilitation, uh, operation and so on. So again, these five, these four feet over the last eight years, and then uh, we do some bear rescue, work closely with the Sabah Wildlife Department, the Wildlife Rescue Unit, and then uh, so far over the last nine years, we have rescued 55 bears uh, from across Sabah, and right now our center has 44 sun bears. And this sun bear lived in a relatively, uh, uh, yeah, we, when we receive bears, there's all kinds of situations. Most of the bear cubs, when they come in, they are mutilated, they are malnourished. Uh, lots of work need to be spent on to, you know, give them a better uh, world, uh, a better care, and then uh, a lot of work, a lot of work. And it is not easy. A lot of work and also very, very expensive as well. I estimated each bear every year on the food and the medicine itself will cost us 15,000 ringgit. So all of these are very, very okay. Two minutes, okay. Uh, I don't think I can have the time to play the video. Too bad. Anyway, so we work with a lot of agency on our education program. Uh, we got school kids coming in, talk about bears, show them. Yeah, so these are the numbers of the school groups that we uh, that visiting our center over the last three years. 
and then uh, something like knocked them up in cages for three minutes and ask them how they feel, you know, because there was a bear that locked up in this cage for like 10 years, yeah, seriously, 10 years, you know, and then show them the bears from a spotting scope. That would bring a big difference to them. And then for those schools that cannot come to us, we go to their school from our education program, uh, education outreach program. Last year we visited 31 schools, year before we visited 19 schools and so on. So these are all the good activities that we can see. There are more and more people engaged, more and more students you know, love to uh, love the work that we are doing and especially love the sun bears. And then our research partner, these are the different university uh, or agency that we work with in terms of our research project. We do research in-house for our captive bear at the same time while sun bears. Uh, right now I have two master students, uh, Kylie and Wai Park, who are studying at Sunway University their master program on studying sun bears in the wild. We also recruit volunteers. So far we have had more than 2,400 volunteers. And we have the ex-volunteers, ready volunteer over here. Say hi to everybody, you know, and come and help us to do all the, a lot of, you know, dirty work, a lot of hard work. So thank you very much, volunteers. Uh, we also provide intern opportunities for uh, in, uh, local school or international school students come and work on sun bears and try to get them, in, and try to get them trained or sun bears. And then uh, for those bears that still have a chance to be able to go back into the wild, we are giving them a second chance to go back into the wild. Like two years, uh, two years ago, we released Natalie, the first bear that we released back into the wild. Uh, Natalie grew up at our center. I raised her up and then uh, right now, hopefully she will run free. Some of the uh, radio uh, color uh, information. And last year, we released another bear called Lawa. And this year, we are planning to release four more bears back into the forest some of the data from the release, you know. And then uh, right now we are building a camp for rehabilitation for bear cubs that we rescue and then they would literally grow up in the forest and every day we walk them in the forest. And so over the last nine years, these are the four things. And then this year I'm introducing four more pillars into the four uh, objectives that we have been working on. The first one would be ecotourism, community conservation, anti-poaching, and captive breeding. These eight themes will be the direction that we are going for the next 10 years or so. Because we simply cannot do one. Everything that you hear is interconnected. We have to work with the local with community conservation, with the local people in order to like stop hunting and poaching, help local community, and things like that. So this interaction is extremely complex, and we hope we can do that. Over the last uh, nine years or so, we have worked on the four objectives, and then uh, in order to conserve the sun bear, we have to do them all. We have no choice, but we have to do them all. Uh, and then our center also uh, tried to promote something that I call conservation ecotourism, where one of the products of conservation is promote ecotourism, and ecotourism pay for conservation, and even better, ecotourism pay for everything else. That would create an incentive for the governments to like you know, uh, conserve forests, conserve the, the wildlife. Lots of the people come from the other side of the world, come here not to shopping, but to enjoy the oldest green forest in the world as well as the wildlife that live in our forest. So ultimately, the goal is to protect our forest. We cannot live without the forest. The forest cannot live without sun bears and any other animals. And then I, I end my talk with this uh, six, uh, 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals that initiated by uh, UN last year. This will be the direction. And then for us, work on the goal number 15, land, uh, life on land. So these are the protections of our wildlife habitat. And this is all the important things that we should plan our activities in the next 15 years in order to safeguard a better future for the young kids in the audience. No matter you like it or not, we need them, we need the bear, we need the forest. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah. Let me sh play one video of how our bear live in the forest. So sun bears spend a lot of time on tree and they sleep high on top of tree. How high is high? About 
about 30 meters on, in this case. And then I zoom in, there's another bear. These are extremely primate like animals that live in our forest. You don't got to see them because they are so high on top of tree. These animals is simply amazing. Wait until you see them. You know, and we all should be feel very 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 proud that we still have bears in our, in our forest and we should conserve them and try to help them as much as possible. Actually, this. I'm gonna show you another clip. Sorry, I'm bad. And then uh, they are, yeah, they actually play. At our center, you can watch them all day long, especially when it's day. You know, I'm literally like three meters away from this bear. Uh, I have, and it is great. You know, if you can make it, don't believe me. Don't please do come and visit. You know, and today I'm very privileged to be able to speak front of two pioneer wildlife biologists from our community. Dr. Lin is 92 this year and she is still growing strong. And we all call Dr. Lin young man. <laughs> and then of course, you know, uh, Dr. Mohamed Khan, who is the former Director General of Pahiletan. He is the one who like really pioneering a lot of the conservations uh, in this, uh, in, in our country. Uh, we got applause to both of them. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Dr. Wong, uh, our next talk is at uh, 